So we'll give this a try. Um, so I'm going to use the Voice Memos app. There's different apps that you can use to record. Uh, and I made this little audio folder. And basically, what I'm going to just try to do is record my voice. Um, you could also use this to record. The, the microphone in the iPhone is pretty good. The Android's probably pretty good as well. So you could record stuff uh, you know, in the world with this, not just your voice. Um, but I'm going to go to my audio folder. And it's pretty easy to use. There's just a record button. You know, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot uh, that you can do with this. Um, so I'm just going to record some test audio. All right, so all right, I'm recording using my iPhone voice memo app uh, for a demonstration for uh, audio editing. I think that's enough. So I'll get a little uh, audio track like this. And if I want to put it on my computer to start editing, uh, there's a couple of different ways I can do it. The easiest one is just to airdrop. Uh, you know, if, you, if it's Mac to Mac, if it's Apple to Apple, you can just airdrop it. I don't know if this computer will let me airdrop it, but I have to get it as a file first. So if you have the new iPhone, um, I mean, I think you've been able to do this for a while. But what I need to do first is, so if I click on this like little three dots up here, it gives me this menu. And I can share, but the sharing options are a bit limited. So I'm going to try to airdrop. And as I can see uh, some people's stuff. Let me see if I can see my own computer. So I'm going to go to airdrop here and say, allow me to be discovered by everyone. OK, so I see my phone. OK, there's administrator's Mac. I think that's me. So I'll just click on that. And oh, I have to click accept. OK, so this is actually going to work, which is cool. I didn't think it would work. Um, but let's see. So there it is. There's my file. It's an M4A file, which is similar to an MP3 file. It's a, it's a compressed audio file. OK, so that worked out. That was good. But if for some reason your airdrop doesn't work or you're going to a PC or something like that, another way that I can transfer this is if, I if you have some sort of cloud storage like Google or uh, Dropbox or something like that, that's an easy way to do it. But there's also websites that will just let you transfer a file, and then it's just going to delete it later. Um, so if you just need to transfer a file, you can do that. So what I would do if the airdrop hadn't worked is I would first put this into a folder. So I clicked on the three dots again, and I'm going to say Save to Files. And um, I have this recording folder that I created. This is just local files on my phone. Uh, so I would click Save. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go to Safari. And I'm going to go to File.io. There's a bunch of different websites that do this, but this is one that I remembered. And I'm going to click Upload here and go to Choose File. Oops. Upload, Choose File. And uh, let's see. Oops. Upload, Choose File. There it is. So it's in my like recent area. Um, but I also could get a list here. I don't see my folders, but I guess I can still see it, so that's good enough. So I'll take that recording. It's going to upload it, and it creates a link. Um, and then I just can get that link. So I go back to my uh, browser and go to file.io slash fzzu. Q V O A X V Q two, and then I can just download the file. So there it is. I have it again. So if you do, if you can't get AirDrop to work, or you're going from you know Apple to PC or Android to Apple or whatever it is, there's a million services like this. This is just the one that I remembered. If you Google like temporary file transfer, you'll find a website like this, and it's you know it was pretty easy to use. Now I have a copy of this audio on my computer. Um, all right, so I'm going to close my iPhone. And 
work with this. Uh, and I can close this as well. So now I have this audio file in my downloads folder. And I can drag it directly into Audacity. But remember, I want to make sure that I don't lose my file. So what I'm going to do is I can disconnect my phone. Uh, so what I'm going to do is open a new finder window by hitting Command N and go to my desktop, go to my folder, and go to audio project. And I'm just going to drag this in here. And it also named the file based on where it thinks I am, which is uh, accurate. Um, so I'm just going to change the name to uh, iPhone test audio. And so now I know I have it in my project folder. I'm not worried about losing it. And I can uh, delete this copy from my downloads and get rid of my downloads folder. And now I can just drag the audio into Audacity. And oh, it's telling me I'm not allowed to. Uh oh. Without the optional FFmpeg library, Audacity cannot open this type of file. OK. Um, so it looks like we don't have the FFmpeg library here. Let's see if we can add it. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, Plugins under Tools. And let's see. I'm going to scroll down a bit, see if it's a default. No, I don't see it. So we might have to do something else. That's OK. That's This would be a good thing to go over, because you guys might run into this issue. Um, let's see just the disabled ones. OK, let's see the new ones. OK, so we have an issue, which is that the Audacity on this computer doesn't have a library installed to read the M4A file. So we need to convert it to something else. So let's see what we can open it with, QuickTime Player. Let's see if we can uh, export as audio only. And let's see if we can change the format. So I'll go to desktop and uh, click Save. OK, so it still wants to do M4A. Um, let's see if there's another way to save as share. Hmm. OK, so it doesn't look like I can do it with QuickTime. There's no option. Let me see if I just type in like .aac. OK. Cancel. OK. I don't know. I think, I don't know why. I guess this version of Audacity just doesn't have that library. Um, let's see if we can open it as music. All right, I'm recording using. OK, so we can hear it. Um, let's see if we can. Uh, you, let's see if we can export it. Uh, OK, so here's the file. Convert. Okay. File, convert, create AAC version. Is it going to let me do that? Oh, I probably put it in my documents folder. Let's take a look. Documents. Or no, we want. Uh, Home, music, media. Nope, it's still an M4A file. OK. Um, all right, let's see. So we can't do it on the computer, but I'm pretty sure we can do it in a browser because it's not a very big file. So let's look up convert to MP3 and see if we can do this. So I'm going to drop this in here. This ended up taking longer than. I expected, but that's okay. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to leave all these settings the same and click Start. And we'll click Download. And there we go, we got an MP3. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, there may be a way, I should have looked at this before, there may be a way to change the default recording setting on your iPhone. Uh, but anyway, now I have an MP3, uh, so that's good. I should be able to use that in Audacity. Let's try it. There we go. There's my audio. So uh, we might. I need to look into that, why we don't have the right library on Audacity, but it's pretty easy to convert the file if you need to do that. Um, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so now we have some audio. Uh, let's take a listen. All right, I'm recording. Okay. So let's add in a little music, and then we'll also play with some effects. So if I want to get music, I'm going to go to the browser. So just like with our sound effects and our images and stuff like that, if we want to use music in our project, we can't just like go to YouTube and get like you know Drake or whatever. Uh, I mean, you can. Uh, people are probably aren't going to like come after you if you're a student, but technically that's not what we're supposed to be doing. So there's a couple ways that we can find music that are Creative Commons licensed. Um, one of the ones that I like to use is Free uh, Music Archive. Um, this one is pretty easy to use. You don't need an account for this, I don't think. Um, so I'm going to browse Free Music Archive. And it's nice because it organizes stuff by genre. So again, there's a lot of different websites that offer this type of thing. This is just one example. But let's say I wanted to have some like uh, jazz at the beginning of my thing. Or we could, I don't know, what do you guys want to choose? Electronic, hip hop, what do you guys think? What? Electronic. Okay, we'll do electronic. Then we get some subgenres: ambient, breakcore, chip music, chip tune, dance, down tempo. There's a lot of different ones. Uh, any suggestions? Chill out. Chill out. All right. So then we can preview the music. That's pretty good. Oh, there's one artist that has like a lot of songs on here. Uh, let's listen to this one. Okay, this first one is pretty good. It's good enough for like an intro. So you could look around, obviously spend more time looking at this stuff, um, but I'm just going to use this first one. And again, I want to remember where this came from. So I can just go to the track page. Um, so I'll go to this track. And so it'll give me some information about the artist. It also gives me the Creative Commons license here. Um, so I can click on that. And this is a not this is an attribution non-commercial license, so it actually has some stipulations. So if I want to use this, I can't use it in a commercial project. So that's okay. I'm just doing a, a educational demonstration, so I don't need to worry about that. But it does require attribution. So if I want to use this music in my project, I have to give credit to the author. So that's the Creative Commons license there. Uh, there's some other information about the track. But overall, this looks good, and so I can download. Uh, so I say I understand and agree. That'll download. That's also an MP3 file, so that's good. So then I'll go back to the Finder and go to my Downloads folder. And again, I want to make sure uh, to keep this in my Project folder. I don't want to just drag it directly into Audacity. And then I also want to save that link, so I'm going to open up my notes, and uh, I have multiple browser windows open. So I'm going to copy the link uh, to this page, and go to my notes, and say this is my background music, and paste that in there. 
So that way I know where to find that if I want to look at it again. And so now I can drag that into my Audacity project. And there we go. It's much longer than the voice audio I have, but that's OK. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit to the beginning. And then I'm going to want to bring my uh, voice audio. So I want to start with the music. So I'm going to clip off this first couple seconds of silence. So I'm just going to select that and then hit delete. And then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see both of these. And then I'm just going to, if I hover over the title of the track, I can drag this over. And so I want to start with the music. Okay, so I want a little bit more music before I come in. And then, I again, I want to bring the music down a little bit when I start talking. So I'm going to use the automation tool. And I'm just going to make a little uh, clip right before I start talking and another one after I start talking. And I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. And I can select this area and listen to how that sounds. All right, I'm recording. All right, I'm recording. Using, right, I'm recording using my. So I want to bring it down a little bit more. So I have to stop to be able to edit again, and I'm just going to bring that down a bit more. Right, I'm recording using my. All right, I'm so that's pretty good. Those levels are pretty good, and so I can continue to edit it. I might just cut it completely at some point, and then you know bring it back somewhere else. Um, but that's basically how I would edit in the sound or different sound effects as I'm as I'm working on it. Um, all right, so I want to do a couple, demonstrate a couple different effects that we can use uh, with our audio. Um, any questions before we do that? Okay. So uh, I'm gonna mute my background music for a second and just listen to the voice recording that I did. And this is going to sound weird, but I'm just going to demonstrate a few different effects. Uh... All right, I'm recording. OK. Actually, we don't really need the uh, selection, so I'm just going to Using... select. Uh... OK. So. In Audacity, all of the effects are under this effect uh, dropdown. And to apply an effect, you have to um, select the audio that you want to apply the effect to. Uh, and it's going to apply the effect like evenly across that audio. And it's also destructive. So remember we talked about the difference between destructive and non-destructive? Once I apply this effect, I can undo it, but I can't change it later on. So if I apply an effect and then I leave Audacity and then I come back later, I can't remove the effect. So you have to keep that in mind. You might want to like duplicate the track before you start to add a bunch of different effects to it, um, so you don't like lose this edit. So uh, that's one downside of using Audacity because it's a little bit of a more simplified program. Is that most of the editing is destructive. Um, so one thing I might want to do right off the bat is normalize my audio. So what normalizing does is it takes all of the audio and it analyzes what are the quietest and the loudest parts and it squishes them a little bit so that it's more even. And you can see that's going to apply differently. If I select my whole uh, voice audio and I go to effect and I go down here to normalize, I can choose the volume I want to normalize to. So if my audio is too loud, I could normalize to like negative 12, something like that, and then hit OK. And you can see it's making everything quieter, but it's also more even. Um, so that was probably too quiet. You can see it's very low. So let's try normalizing to 0. So instead of negative 12, I'll do 0. OK, so it didn't change as much, but it's going to be a little bit more even. If I normalize certain parts independently, it's not. It's going to change more dramatically. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so I'll find uh, a quiet part here. 
or let's just take this little bit here. So if I normalize this part, that whole thing got a lot louder, right? Because it's, it's all pretty quiet. Whereas if I normalize this whole section, it's relative to that. So if I go back and normalize, it's making, it's a, actually not that easy to tell, but it's, it's taking in all of that audio into account when it does the normalizing. So for voice recordings, you probably want to normalize it because it's probably not um, as loud as you want it to be. So I'm going to zoom, I'm going to select this and zoom to the selection and normalize. Okay. All right, I'm recording using... So it's a little bit louder. It's not that noticeable on these speakers. It would be more noticeable in headphones again, but we can... It's a good thing to normalize your audio at the beginning. So there's a bunch of other effects in here. Some of them do more obviously, uh, you know, audible things. Some of them are more subtle changes. Um, one thing that you might want to use, especially for voice audio, is a noise gate. A noise gate is going to listen for when the noise gets very quiet, or when the sound gets quiet, and it's going to remove the quietest parts of your sound, depending on a threshold that you set. Um, so we can preview this. All right, I'm recording using my iPhone voice memo app. Uh, so it's a little hard to hear because there's a lot of noise going on in the room. Again, if you had headphones on, what, we, what you would hear is that these little sections are getting removed. So that extra noise that you hear when somebody's not talking is getting cut out. And if I apply this noise gate, we didn't see that much change. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to undo. And we got to, we, I'll maybe up the threshold just so we can see it visually. So I want to get rid of like this little noise here. So I'll select again and go to noise gate. It's too bad that we have like whatever this is going on right now. So if I up the threshold here, that's going to be too high. It's going to cut out a lot, but I'll try like negative 24 maybe. Okay, so now you see all of that noise just got cut. So that is useful, especially for narrative or vocal audio, because there's going to be all these little noises in the background. And if we're talking, you won't notice them. But if they're not talking, then you will notice them. So we probably won't be able to hear the difference, especially with this like lawnmower or whatever's going on. But Alright, I'm recording using... You can kind of hear it just like completely goes silent there. So noise gate is another thing that's good to use if you're recording vocal audio. You know, if you're doing a podcast or if you're recording somebody singing or something like that. Uh, the noise gate is another thing. You're not going to notice it in the sound, but it's a, it's a useful thing uh, to take out noise. Um, a couple other things. I'm not, there's obviously a lot of stuff on here. I'm not going to do everything here. Um, but there's a couple other things you can do uh, to make different types of effects. So, for example, let's say I wanted to make it sound even more like I was talking on a telephone or something like that. I could use a high-pass filter. And so what this is going to do is it's going to cut out certain frequencies and it's going to make the sound uh, sound more sort of electronic or uh, sort of crackly. So let's, let's preview this. All right, I'm recording using my iPhone voice memo app. Uh, so you can hear it takes out those bottom frequencies, and the result is it sounds like I'm talking on the phone, right? So maybe you want to have a scene in your podcast or your film or whatever when somebody's talking on the phone. You can edit the audio to make it sound that way instead of like actually trying to record somebody talking on the phone or you know whatever else you might do. Um, so high-pass filter is a good thing to use for that. Uh, there's also a low-pass filter, uh, which does the opposite. I'm not sure when this would be useful, but we could take a listen. All right, I'm recording. So maybe if you have, iPhone like, voice memo app, uh, cool. that could be useful if, like, somebody's, like, in a box or underwater or in a closet or something like that. You could apply a low-pass filter. So you can hear the effects of that. We're just editing the audio. We're taking out some of the higher frequencies or some of the lower frequencies. Um, a couple more things that we can do that are more we're going to hear more of 
we can do things like change the pitch speed. Um, so if I change the pitch, or let's change the speed first. If I change the speed, um, let's uh, double the speed. It's going to sound like a chipmunk, right? OK. But what I can do, if I want to change the speed, I can bring the pitch back down. So let's say I multiply the speed by 2. But I want the pitch to stay the same. I can go to Effect, Change Pitch. And I'm going to bring it down uh, two half steps. Or I guess I could try the percent change. Uh, 50%, but we want to go the other way. OK. Let's see if that works. All right, I'm recording. OK, so now it's faster, but it still sounds like my actual voice. All right, I'm recording. So we can go the other way, too. I'm going to undo that. If I want to uh, change the speed to be slower, let's do 0.5. Good. So again, it's slower, but the pitch is lower, so it sounds weird. So we can take that and change the pitch. So we'll change the pitch 50% uh, up. Okay, not far enough. Let's try 100%. Oh yeah, because I multiplied it by 2. Or I went down half, so I have to go up. Wait, I, I divide it in half, so I have to multiply by 2 to get the same. All right, I'm recording. So it sounds kind of weird, right? We can hear the, like, the stuttering in the audio, but we get that effect. If we want to slow down the audio but keep the pitch, we have to do both of those. Um, let's see other effects that we can use. Uh, distortion, echo, those might be fun things to add to like effects. Uh, let's do an echo. All right, I'm recording. Um, let's do a longer section. All right, I'm recording. I'm record. Okay, so we could do a shorter delay time. Let's do like point one. All right, I'm recording. So we can get kind of a cool echo effect if we want something like that. Um, we can also do reverb if you want to make something that you recorded sounds like it's happening in a bigger room. Reverb is a good way to do that. You have a bunch of different options. You can see the room size, all these different options. But uh, let's just try it. All right, I'm recording. Okay, so you can make it sound like it's in like a bigger room or a church or something like that. That's another effect that you can add. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that we want to add in here. Uh, there is, I, I don't see it on here, but there is a, um, auto-tune effect for, uh, Audacity, but you might have to download it. I don't see it in here. Um, uh, but this is okay. Uh, noise reduction could be useful. Um, it's too noisy in here already. We won't really be able to hear the difference for that, but, um, you can take out some of the noise. For this one, you have to listen to the audio to get the noise profile. So you click this, and it's going to listen. And then you have to go back, and then you can preview. Right, Sounds pretty much the same. Uh, compression is really useful for audio, um, but it's kind of hard to hear the difference. But what compression does is similar kind of to normalizing, but it's a more sophisticated algorithm where it listens to the audio and it basically finds what the lowest point and the highest point is and it brings those closer together so the audio sounds more consistent over time. Um, so you're not gonna hear the difference with this, but it's good. We might see the waveform change a little bit. Yeah, so it made the waveform louder. Um, so compressing the audio will make it you know, it'll make it more consistent. It may make it louder if the audio is quiet. It may make it quieter if the audio is too loud. But it's a good thing to apply, especially to vocals. I don't think we'll be able to All hear right, the difference. I'm recording using it, my. It's actually a little too loud. It's getting a little bit distorted. Um, but that's okay. 
Uh, you kind of have to play around with these effects to get the right uh, get the right sound. All right, I think that's enough. Any questions? Anything you guys want me to to go over? No. Everybody's good. Okay. Yeah. You can download this for free. Okay, that's true. Yeah, there's a link. If you go uh, to, if you're on the Open Lab page and you go to Topics Audio, this link, Download and Use Audacity, you can download it for free on any computer. Okay, so it doesn't really have the software. Yeah. Uh, Logic is good. It's a, it's a much more high-level, sophisticated uh, program with a lot more options. But it basically works pretty similarly. So if you're familiar with it, you should go ahead and use that. Um, I'm going to go over GarageBand a little bit next week. And Logic and GarageBand are kind of from the same software family. Um, so that's fine. Uh, any other questions? All right. Um, so uh, you guys can use the rest of the class to start working on this. It's, uh, you know, if you have headphones, uh, it might be good to use them. But if not, that's OK. We'll just try to keep things relatively quiet. Um, but uh, just, again, reviewing what we're working on. So the prompt is an audio portrait of a place. Um, you can interpret this you know, however you want. If you have a specific idea of something that you want to work on, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, we just need to have a collage of sounds. So five different sounds. You can record them. You can source them, uh, download them, however you want to work on them. You can record yourself talking. You can record your friends talking, um, record a space. Whatever you feel inspired to do should be fine for this. Um, the only real requirements is there's five different sounds. Uh, and you know they're edited together. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. So uh, you can also work in groups, as I mentioned, just as a reminder. If you want to work with somebody else, you can do that. Um, you can work together. Uh, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, yeah. So let's work on that. Uh, if you guys have questions or you need help with anything, let me know. Uh, and we should have some time for you guys to get started. Um, oh, let me stop.